We're just 30 minutes away from the closing bell. Second last trading day of the year. Penultimate. Let's check in on the big US and Canadian indices. Uh, we've seen pressure across the board today, but really trading fairly lackluster. Here's what one market player told Reuters. Traders are ready to tie a bow on 2015 very happily because one of those years when most asset classes didn't work. Uh, that was from the regional investment director at US Bank Wealth Management in Phoenix. Now, Reuters is pointing to Apple. Oh, there's the oil price, of course. That's dragging on the energy stocks today. Uh, but Reuters is pointing to Apple as one of the big drags on the indices. We saw it trading down earlier, around 1%. Uh, and there is a scorecard for Apple over the past week. So you can see it's been weaker than the broad market. Now, apparently there are concerns among some Wall Street analysts about potentially soft iPhone sales. Uh, just before Christmas, Apple made a whole bunch of changes to its executives. Uh, for example, it moved Jeff Williams up to chief operating officer. So you can see the stock there down less than 1% right now. But you have to remember that our initial research shows that if you unwrapped a smartphone or a tablet at Christmas, there's a nearly one in two chance that it was an Apple device. Uh, apparently, in the six days to Christmas Day, Apple's iPhones and iPads took just about half of the share of device activations. That comes from Yahoo's data analytics arm, Flurry. So Apple's still selling plenty of iPhones, but uh, some people looking ahead to potential slowing growth. And it does seem like growth is slowing in the developing markets, but doing fine in the Mideast, for example. Well, let's get back to David Burroughs, President and Chief Investment Strategist at Barometer Capital Management. He has some stock picks for 2016. Um, in the cloud, we know that we need, apparently we need to do more and more computing, more and more data out there. How much of it is useful, I don't know. But you think Microsoft and Amazon are good plays here? We, we do. So again, in a, in a bull market, it tends to be there are have and have nots. And there are secular themes that have a tailwind. And of course, one of the areas is in technology and cloud computing. Uh, so uh, we've been big investors in Amazon over the course of the last 18 months. Uh, and Microsoft over the last year. Microsoft seen as a big old sleepy company, uh, but uh, Satya Nadella coming in as CEO really pushed on two issues. One is software as a service, Microsoft 365 where people are subscribing on a monthly basis, over 100% growth in that business. Mm -hmm. And then their cloud business, Azura, which is where they're providing computing power in the cloud on demand. So let's say you're a retailer headed into Christmas, you've got your own infrastructure, but as its system starts to overload, on demand they can turn on access to cloud computing, which is gonna supplement what they're doing and they're paying by the minute. Mm -hmm. So ultimately, uh, companies don't like to deploy a lot of capital in their business. And if they can take on that capacity as needed, uh, it's something that's very attractive. And that business is growing you know, over 100%. It's like the move to streaming and music. You it, just pay by the week and it doesn't seem like very much. It really is. So it helps their customers to be capital light. Uh, mm -hmm. And it helps them to deploy their software across networks in an efficient way. Uh, and we all talk about AWS, the part of Amazon, which is cloud-based mm -hmm. computing, is very attractive. You know, Microsoft's over four billion in revenues and growing at 100 percent with very high margins. Uh, this is this is a very attractive business. So Microsoft's growing their dividend 19 percent a year over the last last five years. Uh, and they're generating lots of cash. Maybe we could put up a 10-year chart for Microsoft. Uh, right. because you kind of forget about it, but it's such an incredible business. Well, it's amazing. You know, it went through that 12-year walk in the woods like so many companies from the NASDAQ did. And ultimately, just recently made a new high going back to 2000 mm -hmm. and has broken out. And technically, at Barometer, we look for things that are fundamentally attractive, where there is some kind of catalyst that can cause an acceleration in the business. Mm -hmm. We want to see technically favorable stocks in parts of the market people care about and just get targeted in those areas. Uh, consumer, now we touched on Home Depot. You reckon household formation is back up and people need to buy skirting boards, you name it. That's right, and this is no secret, you know, Home Depot. And this is one that's, that's been a favorite for some time and leaders tend to continue to lead. So mm -hmm. I, I like the stock despite the fact it's not inexpensive. Uh, but if you think the consumer is improving, you know, electronic payments are improving. 
And so when you look at electronic payments, you think of Visa and MasterCard. So let's talk about Visa, right? They're, they're, the payment uh, volumes are growing at like 10% globally. So growth at 10% is hard to come by anywhere. Uh, it's a business that's highly defensible because there's only a few companies in this space. Uh, you don't need a lot of capital tied up in the business. It generates lots of cash flow. Uh, and uh, recently, they had a catalyst. They bought the European operations, Euro European visa, which will allow them to cut their tax rate. It'll allow them to cut some costs. And so you're buying a long five to 10 year secular theme in the growth of electronic transactions. Uh, and again, it's a pretty predictable business. Um, on defense, Northrop Grumman? Yeah, so this is a separate theme. And in the U.S., they've seen declining budgets for defense for the last 10 years. These tend to go in, in waves. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got a pickup in activity around the world with ISIS and things going on in, in, in uh, Russia and other parts of the world. Uh, so defense spending is marked to start to pick up probably about 5% a year. Mm -hmm. Northrop Grumman won the long-range bomber program for the U.S. It's the biggest defense program that's been awarded in years. And this will go on for many, many years. They're going to build another long-range bomber? Yes, they are. And I they... thought the B-52 was going to last. <laughs> the B-52 could be around for a century. It, it, it could be. But the, because they've tried building two long-range bombers, and they've been pretty unsuccessful. That's right. So this is, this is, a, this is a very big program. Okay. Now, 90% of their sales go to the U.S. government. They're pretty good credit. Uh, we know that uh, conflict is not slowing down. So Northrop Grumman has got a, did really well through a declining defense budgets. They've won big new projects, uh, and again, pretty predictable business. Um, healthcare, Bristol Myers Squibb, one of your favorites. Yeah. So, so just to go back to healthcare, biggest industry in the U.S. Uh, we you know we have an aging population. When you talk about Bristol Myers, you're really talking about Updiva, which is their new drug for cancer. Um, so let's see, the, the revenues in Bristol Myers are about $14 billion. Uh, analysts uh, think that they could do as much as $9 billion in sales in this one drug by 2020. So it's approved for lung cancer, it's just been approved for kidney cancer. Uh, you're going to get, again, strong uh, cash flow growth. They've raised their dividend 23% a year over the last five years. Again, pretty attractive. And finally, the banks, Wells Fargo is one of your favorites, sir. Yeah, if you think household formation is picking up, there's three things that can help help uh, Wells Fargo. Certainly their balance sheets in the U.S., all the balance sheets for the financials have been fixed. Uh, their dividend growth has been low, but but uh, Wells Fargo has grown theirs in the mid-teens over the last, last three years. Uh, you get increasing interest rates means their net interest margins will rise. They've been suppressed for a long time. The difference between what they get uh, they pay their customers for deposits versus what they can charge the loan. And um, with them being the largest lender in the mortgage market, an improving housing market gives them a bit of a lift. I think financials are what could lead next year because many of them sat out over the last six months. And if they can get broken out, this bull market has another significant leg higher. And um, what about, you must be worried though, I mean, we do hear that income inequality in the States is a problem. You know, we've even heard reports of rising suicide rates among lower income whites yes. in the States. So isn't that going to be a, an ongoing problem for the U.S. economy, this, for, this growing mass of poverty? Yeah, for, for, sure that it, for sure it is. But if you have a slowly growing economy, you have uh, low credit losses, you have increasing net interest margins, you have improving housing market. You know, these are companies that are not paying out much of their earnings. They can raise their dividends at a faster rate over the next three years. Now you contrast that to the Canadian environment. Mm -hmm. We got a housing market that could come under pressure from low oil prices. I don't think forty dollars is in our economy. Forty dollar oil is in our economy yet. We uh, haven't come to terms with it. Have not come to terms with it. It's not washed its way through the economy yet. I think uh, there's a little bit of disbelief still in Alberta. Uh, and realistically, we're not getting an interest rate increase anytime soon in Canada. So net interest margins aren't getting better for the Canadian banks. So probably the improvement is more likely to be in the U.S. financials than the Canadian financials. And there, Raj and Q, we just looked at the, um, the spider uh, financial sector ETFs, and yeah. it's had quite a run. Yeah, and even the REITs in the U.S. are starting to pick up here, and that's been a drag on the financials over the last year. And that's interesting. I guess they've been weighed down by interest rate concerns but That's it's right. going to be slow, the rate increases. That's right. Yeah. That's right. David, thanks so much. Andrew, thanks for uh, having have me. Have a great 2016. Thank you, and Happy New Year to you. Our guest has been David Burroughs, President and Chief Investment Strategist at Barometer Capital Management.